Hi, I'm Scott, and I'm an LA Fish Guy. Welcome back to the new, shorter, multi-part version of LA Fish Guys. So it's the following morning, having just set up the two 300 gallon salt water making containers and the reverse osmosis deionization water purification system, you can see we produced about 60 gallons of water. Unfortunately it was in the wrong container, meaning the container it was in was leaking water. I had to drain it and pump it over to the other container. So as it turns out, apparently I have termites in the board that sits underneath the water container and whether as a result of the cleaning of the bottom of the container that broke the hole through or just coincidence last night, that water began to leak out of the container. So I've had to remove it out of this board area and take it out to the driveway so I could find out where the hole was and patch it. So I'll start first by complimenting Scott for the suggestion of putting all the union fittings inside the pipe because that made disassembling the plumbing quite easy. The second thing I wanted to comment about was me and Scott were kind of going at each other in regards to this um, flexible tubing in here and I kind of reluctantly said okay let's put it up here and I pass it off as a earthquake preparedness. But as it turns out uh, that allowed me to swivel uh, that pipe there from the discharge of the water pump so that this morning I was able to pull out that container all by myself. So in regards to the container we had to determine where the leak was and what that required was I ended up putting it on top of the cart over here uh, and then I put in a little bit of water to see where it was coming from and as it turns out it was coming right from there and you can probably see what's left of the uh, hole I've kind of patched it now now about three four years ago I had a similar issue where uh, basically I ended up with water leaking out turned out to be the result of a tiny little hole and as it turns out both of these holes tend to correspond with holes in the plywood and so I got a funny feeling that uh, if you look close here you can see the tiny little fine shavings which are usually the telltale signs of um, uh, termite turds or something like that Anyhow, um, the board is fine. What I've done is taken, dried it out. I've filled all those little uh, boring holes with silicone. And then having found where the leak was over here, not only did I apply some silicone uh, up there on the inside, that way pushing it through, because this is the water in the container is going to be exiting the container from the inside going out. So if I start with my silicone, which was you know, pliable when I applied it, push it into the little hole from the inside. In the future, any water pressure is just going to keep pushing that further in and making it less of a chance of leakage. And then I also took and uh, applied some silicone out here as well. After allowing the patch to dry on a hot Sunday afternoon for a number of hours, I can place the container back onto the flat cart and roll it back over next to its spot and with a hee-ho lift it up into position. Once again, those union fittings Scott suggested have come in really handy and it's almost a breeze reassembling the plumbing and various fittings. And so while I really didn't relish the thought of having to disassemble all this on a hot Sunday morning when the humidity is way up, there are some silver linings. Yesterday we had mounted the solenoid valves as well as the power strips here on the wall. Turns out they're directly over a power outlet. So this gives me a chance to move all of this over about six inches so that if there is any leakage here of water, it doesn't end up directly onto the, uh, the power itself. And now what I need to do is uh, cut a new piece of tubing to span between these two points here 
that would be the water coming out of the solenoid going into the container and then hook back up the two float switches and I made it a point to mark which one was the uh, the top so I'm okay there and those are easy connectors so let me cut some new tubing and get that secured and start making some more water the tubing from the solenoid to the container just requires a new length of tubing it's those connections which are easy and convenient but care needs to be taken to ensure a proper seal or seat. The two float switch connectors were marked to make sure that I would reattach them in the correct order. And with everything secured, I even moved this power strip a little further over. Now it's time to plug back in the solenoid. And we're once again making water. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish, ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bazaar. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. SpectraPure manufactures the best filtration systems on the market and they're one of the few manufacturers that actually make their own cartridges as well. If you're looking for a filtration system for your reef tank or fish tank, look no further and don't settle. Check out SpectrePure.com for more information. In addition to filtration systems, they also make some of the best dosing solutions on the market. The Leader Meter 3 can control up to four pumps and you can program the amount of transfer or the amount of fluid you want to transfer with the push of a button down to the milliliter. If you're looking for a dosing solution, check out SpectrePure.com. They're not only a manufacturer, they're an innovator, and they make some of the best equipment available. Are you still tumbling bio pellets? Tired of constantly replacing your GFO? Or trying to grow algae in your refugium? And you still have algae problems? Get real. Real filtration, that is. Algae scrubbers from Santa Monica Filtration will turn this into this by growing this weekly two styles of scrubbers the hog and the surf both are extremely easily installed and noticeably effective you want results algae scrubbers are the answer visit santa-monica.cc so it's about a week later now we've completely resolved the issues with the holes in the bottom of the containers we used some more silicone we were able to seal those we've tested them there is no further leakage and i feel comfortable enough to proceed forward so much so that over the course of the last week i produced over 600 gallons of purified water and i'm beginning to get quite comfortable and familiar with the SpectraPure rodi purification system uh, you can see up here we've got 272 uh, of TDS coming on the inside and on the outside we've got it all the way down to six so it's it's almost ultra pure water so you can see here we've got 300 gallons of purified water Scott's float switches have worked uh, flawlessly uh, a number of times over the course of the last week because in addition to this 300 gallons I've also made another 300 gallons of salt water over here previously. I had originally considered using a smaller water pump as the circulation between the two containers, but at the last minute decided to put the bigger pump on there. I'm glad I did because the stronger pump is going to move that water much faster. This water pump will actually come on in two different ways. There's a timer over there on the wall that originally it was every three hours. I've now backed it off to every six hours. It comes on for about 30 minutes. So it's always in a, a continuous circulation kind of mode. 
the other thing I can do is turn it into the manual switch, which will run it continuously until I turn it off, and that I'll usually use just as, I, just as I've added new salt into the system. Let me show you how strong it is. And you can see just how strong it is inside there, so it's really moving the water around, and if I allow that to run for an hour or so, there's a pretty good circulation or momentum inside there uh, that'll continue on. So that helps dissolve any of the salts that might take a little bit longer than others. I've not yet had the opportunity to use the valve here that would send water out to the van because I haven't picked up the fitting for it yet, but I'm pretty confident that this pump would more than capably pump to my van just 20 feet away at the most. Uh, in addition, there's the valve on the back side that ultimately will be sending water to the reservoir uh, over in the fish holding system, and that'll be real helpful with regards to water changes or even topping off. And so in addition to becoming familiar with making purified water and then transferring it from one container over to the second container to make salt water, I also need to become familiar with forecasting my schedule or at least my needs. Previously I would get five to six hundred gallons of water delivered every two weeks. Now I have the luxury of making it over in any quantity I want, whether it be Scott's 30 gallon uh, refill uh, arrangement or the 200 gallon version of what the bag of salt comes in. Again, I just simply need to be able to forecast my needs and make that in advance. For example, tomorrow two different customers will consume 70 gallons of water. On the next day, there's one customer that will take 100 gallons of water. Over the course of the next three days, there might be a handful of customers that will take collectively 100 gallons of water. So I need to be aware of that, make the appropriate amount of purified water, have a, the appropriate amount of salt water made in advance, and of course another thing is inventorying salt mix. And salt mix is an entirely different story and an entirely different episode maybe down the road. I want to stay on topic and that is water purification. What we've employed is a new means of making salt water. We've started with a purification system that produces ultra pure water. Uh, we've set up a mixing system that allows us to move that purified water into a mixing vat and with the addition of salt mix we can then make our salt water. The things I need to be aware of are going to be my needs in the future, so I need to make sure that I produce enough uh, reverse osmosis or purified water, and at the same time produce enough salt water in advance, as well as having enough salt to make all that. Ultimately, the goal here was twofold. One, to try to produce a better quality water, and two, to try to create a more time-friendly um, arrangement for me. Whereas before, there was a little bit of pressure mostly on myself or put on by myself to take minimum 500 gallons every two weeks. Granted the company was willing to back off but we came up with this alternative for making it ourselves and that brings us to number two. Would it be a better quality product and would it be slightly less expensive? So again there was a cost issue and a time management issue. I think we're going to achieve that because I do feel very comfortable in the quality of the water that we're producing now. Uh, I also will be very curious to see if in the long run it's a lesser expensive alternative. I do feel that it will. I'd like to take just a quick moment and thank the folks over at SpectraPure. Um, they've been very knowledgeable and very helpful in setting up this system. Uh, you can visit their website at uh, SpectraPure.com. Uh, they've also got a toll-free 800 number and very knowledgeable people to talk with you. Uh, I'd also like to thank Scott for helping me set up the system. And so as we explore new ways of offering a better quality product to our service customers, as I've always said, keep moving forward.